comes to our mock-up model presentation of autonomous drive system. Our group name is Share 3 and our group members are Berkay Kutsukus from the Red Shirt, and Mekan Kutsukus from the Blazer, Mehtap Yusuf, Boris Keski, Egemen Unal, Sibra Topçu, and myself, Umut Gökten. Before we get to start, let's take a look at the outline. What's going to happen during this presentation is that, first of all, I'm going to define the problem, and I'm going to talk about the elements of the autonomous drive system, and then Berkay and Egemen will show you some animations and discuss some of the details of the physical mockup. And finally, Meitan is going to <coughs> conclude everything and talk about the experience we gained. First thing we have to do is to define the problem. So we, we're talking about the mobile robots here. Mobile robots can be specified in, in two kinds. There's holonomic ones and there's non-holonomic ones. The major difference is that the holonomic ones uh, can move in the desired directions and they can rotate without any slippage contrary to non-holonomic ones. In other words, the number of controllable degrees of freedom for the holonomic ones are equal to the total degrees of, degrees of <coughs> freedom of the system. Well, let's come back to our, our holonomic drive system. What's our main focus? Well, during this design project, our main focus was we wanted to create a mechanism that would move and rotate uh, in the desired direction without any slippage. Well, in order to do that, we need to have some concepts. And out of this concept, we need to <coughs> choose the best one. So in order to do that, we need to evaluate them. How did we do that? By these two methods. We used morphological charts and fused method. But before we do that, we need to do something else. Well, the, the whole system needed to be decomposed into its function, which can be shown here. This is our functional decomposition. This is the the main function, and these are sub-functions. And one of the sub-functions we have is own sub-functions. What is this then? Well, this is the morphological chart. Take a look at the upper side. You can see the number of concepts. There, there's seven on, on this one, on this sub-function. But the number of the concepts might be different for each single, every single sub-function. Because of, they might be independent of the, of the sub-function as well. For example, for the zero turn radius, we had another concept which was about lifting the system and rotating it. And it was all about rotating, so it's not evaluated in here. But this one has only seven. On the left side, we have our criteria. Well, these are criteria, but these are not uh, weighted equally. Uh, they're weighted based on the priorities and the requirements of the project. And in the middle, we, we rated them. And at the end of the day, uh, the one with the highest rating, the one which was best in overall, is selected as the best concept. We had five main sub-functions. One of them was moving the platform. In this one, our winner was the gear set with cantilever motor because of its advantages of simplicity of the design, manufacturing time and cost, availability of the parts and the controllability. Controllability was the key one in here. What about the rotating with zero turning radius? Well, same concept, one here too, as I, as I mentioned before, some, some concepts might be shared uh, within the sub-functions. Same, same concept, gear set with cantilever motors, and its advantages were controllability, durability, design simplicity, and manufacturing advantages. What about carrying the load? Our system was subjected to carry <coughs> a weight of 25 kilograms. And in, in this sub-function, our winner was a detached loading bus. It was detachable. Well, the key concept on this subject was durability, of course, and the simplicity of design, and safety of loading. We didn't want the load to uh, fall apart, or we didn't want to uh, let it fall ar around the system. And manufacturing cost and time, of course, was one of its advantages, too. Another advantage was it's, it's detachable. If you don't want to carry anything, you don't have to put it above the system. Well, whatever happens on the platform does not stay on the platform, so we need to carry things outside of the platform now. But in order to do that, uh, we have a computer with cable. We use that for gathering information from user. We, we chose a cable because it's simple, it's low cost, and it requires low programming time. With, with wireless remotes, uh, you need to have batteries, and batteries die. 
We all have iPhones, right? They die, they just get low. When it gets low, it receives low signal. And sometimes the device might get out of the range. But when you have cables, the cable is your range, so it's no big deal. And finally, gathering automation information. Well, we solved this problem with the Mokova encoder and its advantages of availability, controllability, low cost, and accuracy. Now, thanks, thank you for listening to me. And now, Darka is going to show you some animations and discuss some further details. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, we only did the uh, two main functions which are moving the platform and uh, rotating with zero radius. Uh, only those animations are done. Uh, let, let me start with the figures. Uh, maybe please open the PowerPoint. <coughs> okay, there are some figures that we obtained from uh, SolidWorks. Wheel module actually. The main parts are uh, two gear sets, one servo motor in each wheel module. There are four of them. Uh, one DC motor, uh, of course, one wheel, and the the main casing. This is the DC motor. The top one is the servo motor. Two gear sets, and uh, there are some necessary shafts. We mount the shafts with uh, necessary retaining rings, uh, and between shafts and gear sets there are keyways and keys. And we use uh, bolts and nuts uh, to attach uh, shafts to ca cases, casings. Uh, let me see something. Okay. Next one. Okay. This is the top view of the platform. There are four of the <coughs> modules. These are the uh, modules that, uh, that I just uh, showed you. Uh, next one, please. And this is the isometric view of it. And now I'll still. I'll show you the assembly and disassembly the processes. <coughs> First, servo motor disassembles and uh, the retaining ring and gear set, and the ring, and the whole module. Uh, you can see the nuts and bolts here. Rings, more rings. Set. And that was the key. That's the DC motor with a flange. Now I'll, I'll show you the assembly process. motor is mounted there. I think the nuts and bolts will come later. There is something wrong with the ordering part. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> we were doing it, the order was, wasn't wrong, but I, I think we, we got the wrong video. That's the, that's the problem. <laughs> Uh, that was not an assembly. Yes, yes, yeah. We, we did the, the uh, assembly correct, but I don't know what, what's wrong here. <laughs> I'll show you the uh, rotation of the wheel. It, it rotates, actually. You can see it when you <laughs> focus on it. <laughs> but <laughs> I, can, I, can see, I, can see, I can see it, but I don't know who it is or not. <laughs> 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 and last, and I'll show you the steering motion. Uh, in the steering motion, <laughs> in the steering motion, not only the wheel steers, the whole the whole thing really steers. Uh, that's that's all I can say with the, about the videos. Uh, from now on. Again, I'm going to talk about the Tomoka and the YouTube video. Hello, everyone. I want to 
I want to talk about the physical model of the mock -up. Uh, As you see, there is a chassis and the module uh, in our project. Uh, this will be our chassis. Uh, by the way, this is a one-to-one -one scale model. Uh, we, are, uh, we are not sure uh, this profile. Uh, we, are, we are sure about this profile, but we are not sure about the sizing of this profile. Uh, as you can see, there is a wheel. There is a gearing set on the wheel axis, and the DC motor is here, and servo motor is here. Uh, by the way, these are uh, servo motor wheels. Uh, with the, this concept, we can <coughs> move this platform forward and back. Uh, and we can move uh, the horizontal back, uh, left and right motion. Uh, by the symmetric case, each motor uh, each motor will turn for five degrees. It can rotate with zero turning. <laughs> After that, <laughs> <laughs> Moving system. Uh, we want to move something in front of you, but uh, we don't have bearings, we don't have couplings, uh, and our motor will not provide, provide enough power for that. Uh, but I can <laughs> rotate it. Rotation of this motor uh, gives it turn. Then there is another servo engine and it can rotate. Uh, this is our first uh, AK uh, gear set one, and this is a compact gear set model. Again, we have no gear set in us, uh, we make serving gear system. and. This devil steering system. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a steering system. Devil will rotate and uh, that's all actually. We can then move the steering We talked about the problem definition, elements of uh, hollowing drive system, uh, animating, and physical mock-up. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about the extent scale and conclusion from this mock-up. Uh, we uh, will decide a final system according to uh, our result of them. Uh, most of the mechanisms used in 
this conceptual design uh, work uh, in the static expected, but uh, the problem is uh, we need to optimize the gears uh, gear size according to the gear size uh, in order not to uh, have any interference with the ground. Uh, I mean, uh, in this design, uh, we have chosen the uh, same gears because uh, we don't have any uh, machine gears. Not, not in uh, but uh, when we uh, choose uh, another uh, gear set uh, in our uh, detailed design, uh, that uh, will be bigger than this uh, pinion. So um, a ground interference uh, uh, may occur uh, if we have choose uh, a bigger uh, gear. So uh, it's an important part. Uh, the uh, shaft of the motor and uh, shaft of the wheel were incompatible. In, uh, uh, so we need to uh, design a uh, half link uh, between uh, shaft of the pinion, shaft of the gear, and uh, wheel shaft of, uh, between shaft of gear and wheel shaft. Uh, so uh, another problem is uh, we have chosen in this mock-up uh, a big wheel, so it comes with a uh, large inertia. Uh, we uh, had problems with uh, turning this wheel properly. So we need to, uh, in order to lower the motor cost and in order to supply power to uh, wheel, uh, we need to choose uh, low inertia wheels. Um, and also uh, for uh, about the weight, for anchors to pass, lighter materials can be chosen uh, by this weight. Um, overall weight will be reduced and uh, the load on the motors will also be used. Uh, and uh, about conclusion, about uh, detailed discussions on all sub-functions. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about possible problems uh, and solutions for these possible problems. And uh, before uh, finish, uh, I may ask, I may uh, take your questions as well. This for running event. So yes, mm -hmm. I can see when you put it in there, so it's using the stack. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Again, it's the problem is uh, too big wheel and too big mounting. Uh, you have to <coughs> uh, decrease the size of it. Yeah. Uh, but the rectangular chaining is the manufacturing easy. For the mock-up, you just cut the wood and... Well, what are the curves of that one? Yeah. Uh, it contains bevel gear, it contains uh, sport gear, or high sport gear. Uh, with this configuration, the uh, platform will be on the, like the tower, uh, and DC motor will be on the top of the platform. Uh, with this configuration, DC motor uh, will uh, come together with <coughs> platform and uh, we think maybe <coughs> this one uh, has a problem with uh, sliding and maybe this one has a problem with uh, height, height specification. In order to that, um, with uh, a tower like uh, module, <coughs> we may uh, decrease the power need from uh, servo motor because. Uh, uh, inertia, uh, inertia will be a cross-section rate uh, more than 
this one. Actually, this will be this will be uh, like a pathology. Any other questions? Why you are using a spray like a bending pipe in a single part? In casing? Yes, if you make that casing. Uh, we think it's easy to manufacture uh, one sheet metal, bend it, bend, 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 bend. Uh, of course, we <coughs> manufacture it with uh, screws or nuts. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to use a welding operation. Of course, or not. Oh, yes, it's yes. easy. consider the assembling process for that thing. So it could be hard because <coughs> you, you have designed it as a single <coughs> part and you bend it and weld it and then you are going to assemble your gears, motors, shaft, bearing, like that. Yeah, we don't have the same care. It would be hard, probably. Well, we must be passing through the metal. Sometimes it happens, okay, sometimes one or two parts passes through the metal. We are kind of okay, but when everything goes through everything, then uh, there are some red flags. We didn't pay enough attention or time for this, or we are not aware of it. As I say, just be aware of that. Blocking gears with travel motor should be assembled with a frame or something like this. Uh, you mean under the travel uh, yeah. yeah. and the connected gear? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's blocking. Yeah. Uh, you should put up the top of uh, the travel motor and, and the gear. Probably you will need to, but, uh, probably, not probably, the torque of, of such a small travel uh, will not be enough. Uh, actually, the torque of my little travel is not enough for uh, all triple uh, seats, so I will start to think uh, yes, because, uh, you think need to for travel. Carry a three to five kilo of block, and uh, under the, this load, you need to turn uh, all these uh, all these uh, all these soft mechanisms, and there will be too much uh, friction, especially if you cannot support the uh, weight. Actually, in wheel shaft, there will be uh, 
very high stress con concentrations, uh, there must be a big bearing on this whole. Uh, also, <coughs> uh, in the several uh, year here, there must be uh, two axes bearing on them. Radially and axially uh, capability of pairing. Yes, we have the camera, we'll put you out there so you can. <coughs> <coughs> I noticed, but I forgot on the table. And then you make animations, just keep the speed low. <coughs> when you're assembling, this is kind of okay, but <coughs> the animation, it's a bit weird and nobody can understand anything in two seconds. Okay. So it's 10 seconds, 15 seconds. 